as we prepare for this time of Lent, this 40 days plus Sundays, I started thinking, you know, in terms of uh, the soul, and I thought about Jesus' temptation, and kind of taking kind of a kind of a reverse look at it. What makes my soul sick? Um, Sunday we'll be looking at what makes my soul healthy or whole. And looking at the temptation, there's four things that, that I see. One is isolation. When it says that Jesus went out to the desert, uh, we could translate that deserted place. It's a place where nobody's at. He's all by himself. He's isolated. It's different than just solitude or a place of reflection. And it can be, a, a place of solitude can be the kind of thing where you're isolated, you're off by yourself away from other people, or it can be, go ahead to the next slide, when you're in a large group of people and there's a large crowd around you, but you're not connected to anybody. So isolation can ha happen in feverish activity and it can also happen when you're doing nothing, when you're completely alone by yourself. The second thing that I noticed in, in the, uh, one of the temptations was presumption in place of faith. And presumption is kind of tricky because it looks like faith. But faith is where we're relying upon God and following God and we're depending upon His promises and being drawn closer to Him in obedience and in submission. Presumption, on the other hand, is where we use God's promises to drive a, a wedge between us and others or between us and God, where we try to assert our own will, where we try to get our will to be done. And as you can see in the temptations, Satan is using presumption or trying to use presumption to um, lead Christ away from a step of faith. And so for us, I think it's a, it's a way to remind us that we can be fooled if we're not careful. Arrogance or fear-based decision-making can be the kind of thing that presumption leads us to. But we really need to strike for faith and trust in God. The third thing I noticed was that we have to worship God alone. Now this might seem easy and it might be obvious, but there's times where we worship a value or a priority or an idea or a person instead of God. Um, we can think of it as kind of a mission drift or when we're a law unto our own. Who and what we worship defines who and what we are to a great extent. And if we're worshiping something instead of God, we're not being drawn closer to God, we're being drawn further away from Him. Go ahead to the next slide. The fourth thing is restlessness, exhaustion, or weariness. Jesus, as He went into the desert, um, there was a sense in which after fasting for 40 days, he was exhausted, he was weary, he was restless. Uh, we got a thing in, I guess it was the Snickers bar advertisements, hangry. You hear that more and more these days, it's successful. But we're affected by our surroundings, right? Um, we can think of when we're hungry, we're, we're more prone to be angry or when we haven't had the sleep that we need or the rest that we need, we don't feel peace. It, I don't know how many of us have experienced with a toddler where it's clear in the way that they respond, you need a nap, <laughs> right? And that can be true for any age. One of the things I also thought about in terms of uh, the experiences with uh, when they talked about computers, I remember when computers were first coming on the scene, and there was a phrase that you hear, heard quite a bit then. You hear it occasionally now, but not very often. 
garbage in, garbage out. If you insert the wrong assumptions, the, the wrong ideas, the wrong data, then you're going to get a wrong answer. And it doesn't matter how effective the computer is, um, it's only as good as what you feed into it. And I think to, to a great extent, that's how our souls work. Our souls will be responsive to what we feed it. What kind of nutrition are we giving to our souls? How are we feeding our souls? Um, I think the season of Lent challenges us to stop, take time to quiet ourselves and to listen from our souls and to look for God's words and direction to us. It's easy to get caught up in the, the noise of the world in which we live, but I think that just like Jesus, we have to be attentive to the Spirit. The temptation begins and ends talking about the Spirit, full of the Spirit, the power of the Spirit. And I think that's the way that we have to live as we live out this, these 40 days.